John discovers something spooky before boarding plane, his flight number is 1015, today's date is October the 15th, the takeoff is also delayed until 1015 due to weather, it's too much of a coincidence, make a man feel vaguely uneasy, he looks around, but doesn't find anything wrong, before boarding, he also asks the captain if everything is okay, after getting a very positive answer, John walks slowly onto the plane, but a passenger in front has a dispute with the attendant because of the seat problem. Watching a family of three want to sit together, John gives up his seat, then he is arranged to a back position, a bald head becomes his neighbor. John finds a tape recorder from the front seat pocket, but the words on the display makes him petrified. A 28-minute recording reveals the tragic mystery of flight 1015. Isn't this the flight? Out of curiosity, John puts on headphone, wants to hear what's playing in there. The plot in the recorder is consistent with what the flight attendant demonstrated, and also mention that it's starting to rain outside. John opens some visor, really, it's pouring rain outside the window. A huge thunderstorm is coming, then, the recorder continues to say that the flight would completely disappear from ATC radar in an hour, at this time the man just thinks it is a prank, suddenly a loud bang. The plane finally takes off after shaking for a while, passengers in the cabin are peaceful, but they don't know that a bad thing is also approaching, then airplane crash mystery continues in tape recorder. First it talks about the information of the captain, meanwhile the captain happens to start broadcasting. John hits the pause button, asks the man next what the captain's name is, but the bald head is at a loss, how can bald head know captain's name? The more the man listens, the more he feels something strange, he asks if the bald head could listen to what is in it, and he doesn't want to see a man crazy like this, so decides to change the seat. John looks at the playing time, and puts in the earphones again, it says that the captain had reported the situation to the ground, there was a large flock of birds around the flight, and hit the engine at 10.21pm now the time happens to be 10.21. A sudden shake, scared John jumping from seat in horror, he drops his earphones, and can't believe what he is feeling, he hurriedly goes in the bathroom, wants to calm down, John forcefully convinces himself, no one felt the impact, he thinks it's all his hallucination, it is just a radio show after all, after fresh up, he returns to the seat, fastens the seat belt, he hit the service button, although John thinks it's ridiculous, he still wants to confirm with the steward, however, after hearing the plane was hit by birds, steward thinks it's impossible, because such an altitude is impossible to appear birds, John wants him to check with captain, but he rejects, and hopes John to stay calm, after all, such behavior also caused panic among the people around, John is also aware of his behavior, maybe that story made him too sensitive, after apology, he promises not to continue it, however, after Stuart leaves, a voice comes from behind, a man says he is sure plane just ran into birds, the man called Mike says that he used to be a pilot of this company, many people on the crew are colleagues, for what's happening just now, crews often don't tell the truth just to avoid panicking, then, Mike leaves his seat, after heard Mike's words, John gets nervous again, he continued to listen to the recorder, it says the plane lost contact at 11.15, now 41 minutes left before disappearing, John knows he doesn't have much time left, this makes him feel pressure again, the fear in his heart also makes him sweating, he starts looking around, John realizes that he cannot do nothing, suspicious clues must be found as soon as possible, he takes out his notepad, start to record some details mentioned in the recorder, possible mechanical failure, or a fire in the cabin, it may also be a communication failure caused by interference, John begins to search, suddenly he hears a sound from ahead, two men are watching a live broadcast, John orders them to turn off their phones quickly, but they swear John is a fussy and critical man, because they connect the internet Wi-Fi from the plane, the two sides begin to fight, it soon attracts the attention of the stewardess, John is brought back to his seat, he put on his headphone angrily, it says there's a tainted witness in the passenger list sitting in the assigned seat, and the mafia will do whatever it takes to make him disappear, maybe that's what causes the plane crash, John finds the stewardess, and wants to know, who is the tainted witness, but the stewardess doesn't know this at all, even if she knows, she will not reveal it, John has no choice but to go back, he sees Mike again, so he sits down next to Mike, John suspects Mike is not a pilot, but the tainted witness, Mike denies his guess, after repeated questioning by John, he only believes Mike is a pilot, wait until all passengers are asleep, John decides to lure the snake out, he quietly walks over to the side of the brutal looking men, wants to find some clues, but when he opens the upper luggage rack, the falling box wakes up the men, John no longer pretends, he directly asks if they are mafia, but the two, said they are football players, the noise also disturbs the stewardess again, 
but this time John doesn't return to his seat, instead, he firmly believes that these two men's identities are suspicious, and speaks of a possible terrorist attack. The captain comes over, and orders him to return to his seat immediately, because he has threatened the safety of passengers, the passengers are using their phones to take the videos, John has no choice but to give up. He slowly walks back to his seat, meanwhile the voice from the recorder makes him tense up again, because it mentions his name, his behavior just now has been posted on the internet. This is the last movement left before plane disappears. The recorder also says that this record was from the passenger in the plane, same situation, same identity information, even voices are the same. After the captain said goodnight New York, the plane disappeared completely from the radar. And at this moment, the captain comes over, he sees John lost his mind, takes him aside, the captain thinks John is in a state of mental breakdown, but now everything on the tape recorder is verified one by one, he looks at his watch, and begs the captain not to say goodnight to New York, everyone thinks he's crazy. Suddenly, John's hands were handcuffed, a woman reveals police identity, because he threatens the plane, the police forcibly restricts his freedom. John is brought back to the sit again, he looks at the time on the plane, act more disturbed, John hopes the policewoman, can listen to the recorder, because the above mentioned are all verified but she doesn't believe it at all, and says he will be handed over to local police once landed. Suddenly, the captain comes over, and call policewoman to a place to discuss things quietly, John listens to recorder again, it mentions, before the plane disappeared, there is nothing unusual about the passenger, everything seems to happen suddenly, until the plane is gone in the clouds, at this moment Mike sits down next, he believes everything John said, Finally John gets someone's affirmation, he thanks Mike for believing in him, then he looks at the captain, suddenly thinks of a plan. Since Mike is a pilot, and used to fly the same model, so as long as we can seize control of the plane, he can turn around, avoid crash, but Mike says it is impossible, because access to the cab requires a password. John looks at the tape recorder, the number 1015 is displayed on it, he thinks that must be the code, but Mike doesn't know why John is so confident, seeing John is so sure, Mike reminds him that, after entering the cockpit, he will reduce the cabin pressure and increase the temperature, it will put everyone into a deep sleep, so as not to cause panic among the passengers, then he leaves the seat, find an oxygen bottle behind and pass to John, when the crisis is over, the two will meet immediately, 11.15 is less than a minute away, John looks at Mike confidently, then sees him walking towards the cockpit, Mike has a grave expression, and decides to gamble his fate, he looks at the code for the hatch, and looks back again, Mike firmly presses 1015, the cockpit is successfully opened, there is a scene of fighting inside immediately, passengers panicked when see this, everyone is in a mess, only John behaves calmly, after reducing the pressure, panicked passengers are gradually deprived of oxygen, soon the whole cabin becomes dead silent, and John is holding an oxygen cylinder, and waiting to join Mike, but Mike says thanks to John from the screen, he doesn't understand until he heard that words, actually the person who made the plane disappear is Mike, at this moment he suddenly realizes, he becomes an accomplice to this disaster, the plane also completely disappears from radar at 11.15 after slipping into dark clouds, don't know how long it has passed, John slowly wakes up from the beach, he gets up from the ground in horror, looking at the scattered wreckage in front, he couldn't believe that he is the only survivor, suddenly, he sees the tape recorder, John hurries over, put on the headphones again, on the recorder, the sequel to the plane crash is playing, after months of searching by rescuers, plane wreckage finally found on an island, and amazingly, every passenger on flight 1015 survived, except for a man named John missing, just when John feels puzzled, suddenly a little boy appears in front of him, just when he thought he is rescued, all the other passengers rush out, everyone's face is full of anger, John is trying to explain that he saved everyone, but people's expressions are stiff, like the walking dead, they swarm and kill John angrily, maybe he doesn't know what he did wrong until the end, and which one is true, which one is fictitious, 